as the clock ticks towards the 9th January South Sudan referendum on possible secession, the country that lies in the north of Uganda will hold together with bated breath, awaiting a result that will either underpin the semblance of stability or send the war riven country back into anarchy. However, many remain optimistic as the voices rallying for peace have silenced the belligerents. Sudanese ambassador to Uganda, Hussein Awad Ali, has offered an olive branch in a message he read to journalists from the embassy here in Kampala today. He says it's in the interest of the Khartoum regime to see South Sudan emerge as a viable state if the southerners opt for separation. The government is keen to settle with our partners in the south and in the same spirit of partnership or the both referendum issues to create peaceful and sustainable relations for the long term after the referendum. His sentiments echo those of President al-Bashir, who during a recent tour of the South, said he would respect the outcome of the referendum. President al-Bashir addressing the citizens of the South a couple of days ago, once more made it very clear the readiness of the government of the Sudan not to only to recognize the outcome of the referendum, but also to cooperate and support security, stability, and development of the new state if South Sudan choose separation. However, al-Bashir says once the South secedes, the Arab-speaking North will be governed under Sharia law. Sudan is the largest country in Africa with a long track record of conflict. But hundreds of freelance militias with stockpiles of weaponry continue to sound war drums ahead of the referendum. The stage has now been set for history to unfold in a country whose populace has only lived under decades of warfare. The referendum will split the country into two, with the South taking with it most of Sudan's oil. It's a priceless moment for the country to choose between peace and anarchy. Emam Taizibwa, NTV 11.